Becoming a YouTube content creator has become increasingly popular these days and pretty much everyone and their mom has a YouTube channel. And with creating content on YouTube comes some struggles with the technical side of it in terms of storing your footage and editing it. What I'd like to do today is go over my setup for how I store my footage as well as how I access that on my editing PCs. Okay, let me preface this video by saying this. This is what I currently use as my setup and it's a setup that works for me. Everyone may have a different workflow than I do and different kind of ways they like to handle their footage and editing. But for me, this is what works and hopefully my workflow and experiences can help some of you. So I watch a lot of YouTube, everything from techies to esports professionals to vloggers to food critics. Um, and what I've noticed with anyone who's not really in that kind of techie section is that there seems to be a lot of trouble when it comes to how to efficiently store your footage. The most common thing I see with a lot of vloggers and people who film a lot of, of video is that they're just keeping them on separate hard drives. Some of them have like stacks and stacks of, of hard drives laying around with just labels on them. And while this is easy to do, you just offload your footage and take the hard drive out, throw a label on it, and chuck it in the closet, you're not really getting a lot of efficiency out of that because one, you can't access the drive anymore, and two, it's not backed up anywhere. So if you lose that, it's kind of gone. So the first thing I want to talk about is how I actually store my footage. I did a video earlier on the home server that I built that functions as my NAS, which is my network attached storage. This is where I keep all the footage that I shoot, both as an archive and for when I'm editing it. I'm not gonna go into a lot of details on my home server because I made a video on that. If you wanna check it out, I'll link it right there. So the basic thing you need to know is that my server has two RAID arrays set up on it. One is a solid state array and the other one is my hard drive array. The solid state array is comprised of four SSDs that are in RAID 5 so that if one goes out, I can just simply put another SSD in there in its place and the entire array is rebuilt. This is what I use to store any footage that I'm currently working on. My hard drive array is a simple RAID 1 configuration, which is just two six terabyte hard drives that are being written to simultaneously and they're just mirror copies of each other. This is where I store all the footage that I'm done with and kind of want to keep it as an archive. So I have a hardline network cable plugged directly into that server, going directly back to my router, which is a one gigabyte connection. I know the first thing a lot of techie people watching this video are gonna say is that, whoa, that's not 10 gig, you can't edit off of that. And under a lot of circumstances, you'd be right. For me, I'm the only one living in my house. So one gigabyte up and down um, across my network is gonna be plenty enough for me simply because I don't have other people um, using the bandwidth uh, through my router or through that server. The way this works is that in my office right behind me, I have my main editing machine. And all I've done is simply created a mapped network drive directly to my server. And from there, I can just directly access those files as if they were sitting directly on my PC in my office. So this is extremely efficient because what this does is allow me to access those editing files from any PC in my house. Now, um, you're gonna want to have at least a gigabyte connection hardwired or else you're not gonna have a really good time. But for my purposes and for my testing, I get pretty decent performance uh, editing across the network on a one gigabyte connection. So on my PC, you can see I've just simply mapped um, my two RAID arrays, uh, my SSD one and my hard drive one. And when I load up Premiere, 
All I do is store my Premiere project directly with those files. So everything is in one location and it is all backed up in case of a drive failure. So I never have to worry about editing off of one drive and you know, in the rare case that the drive dies mid edit, you know, I, I lose everything. In this case, my server is using that RAID array to make sure everything's backed up and I shouldn't really ever lose the footage, knock on wood. So this is extremely convenient because I can literally edit from any computer in my house that is connected to the network. So my Windows laptop, if I wanna, you know, hang out in the kitchen and edit. If I want to actually edit directly from my server, I can do that. Um, my main production PC, uh, obviously, and then as well as my MacBook. So it's not tied directly to Windows. You can map a network drive from Mac to a PC RAID array. Even using Premiere Pro on here, I can access those same files. Now this covers how I store and edit my footage from within my house. But as the title suggests, I said that I could edit from anywhere in the world. I guess that comes with a caveat that I have to have an internet connection um, because what I've done is I've installed a software called Rainway on my server. So Rainway is a software specifically designed for remote gaming, but uh, a lot of people were asking for the feature to be able to use it as a remote desktop because of all the benefits that come with the low latency algorithms that they use to make sure this is functional for gaming. Those translate really nicely to editing. Rainway is running on my server with a Ryzen 7 2700X and an RTX 2070. So it in itself is a pretty good production machine. So what I'm actually gonna do is take my MacBook, drive down the street, and try to edit a video off of a 5G connection. So let's try that. Okay, so <clears throat> I drove down the street um, and now I'm, I'm sitting kind of on the side of the road uh, like an absolute weirdo about to attempt to edit a video. I guess I'll preface this by saying, if you wanna access the computer that's running Rainway from outside of your home network, um, you need to follow the instructions on their website for opening ports for remote access. So I'm currently connected to my phone, um, hot spotted in on a 5G connection with one bar. So this is pretty suboptimal, but the first thing you're gonna do is open up Rainway for, um, for the web player. Okay, um, when you get in, the first thing you're gonna do is click on this remote access button, which is just looks like a computer screen. Uh, you click on that and it should uh, find your machine and open up. And now I've simply opened up Premiere on the server and I'm attempting to edit a video um, as if I was sitting in front of that machine at home. So um, let's just scrub through the timeline. And as we're doing that, the latency is pretty impressive. So if I play, it looks smooth. I mean, it's perfectly doable. Um, one thing you might have to do is, is mess with your audio settings to get it to output to the right thing. It's not perfect by any means. And obviously I would much rather be sitting in front of my machine doing it, but I would not have any issues doing this um, in the event that I was going out of town and, you know, I, to, obviously if I was staying somewhere with a decent internet connection, um, I would have no problem leaving all of my footage at home and just simply accessing it through Rainway um, because this is great. By far the best remote access software. So, and it's free. I mean, that's that's kind of how I do it. It's, it's certainly up to you if you want to set up something like this, but um, that's what I do and this is how I do it. 
Okay, so as you saw, it was definitely functional. I mean, obviously it's not gonna be as good as, you know, sitting in front of your actual um, machine that you're using to actually edit videos, but there's positives and negatives to this, obviously. Um, the benefits being that you don't have to worry about taking all your footage off of one drive, keeping it on another one. And the other benefit being that that uh, server can render a video a lot faster than this MacBook. And I mean, this is a pretty decent MacBook Pro. So the benefit being that you could have a pretty weak sauce laptop and as long as you know you're you're using a decent production machine to host your um, your rainway, you can essentially edit off of a potato as long as it has a decent internet connection. The downside, obviously, there is that you have to have an internet connection to do this. This is my setup. I know there's more optimal ways to do this. Um, obviously, I would love to have a 10 gig connection throughout my house, but it can be pretty expensive if you're building out an entire setup for yourself. Uh, one thing I wanna mention is that um, for storing of this, if you wanna just take my advice and um, kinda my workflow for storing data, you don't need a full-fledged server to do this. You can get a standalone NAS solution from Synology or QNAP and those will work perfectly fine with the methodology I use, um, especially when you know editing directly from that using a one gigabit connection. Some of the high-end solutions from Synology and QNAP can come with Thunderbolt connections as well as 10 gig options. So if you do want that kind of built-in solution as affordable as possible, you can go with something like that and just hook your NAS directly to your editing machine. And from there, you have a 10 gig connection and you have the redundancy of storing your production footage. So hopefully this helps somebody out. So if you like this video, be sure to drop a like below. If this is your type of content, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you're notified the next time we post something awesome. See y'all in the next video.